Putin takes Ukraine and the whole world watches the Western response. China is among those keeping a close eye on developments. So is Taiwan next? Is Beijing preparing to invade? Well, joining us is retired Brigadier General Robert Spaulding. General Spaulding is a senior fellow at the Hudson Institute. He's an expert on East Asia Pacific security affairs. General, it's good to talk with you again. So she is watching, he's watching closely, how the Western powers have responded to Putin's invasion of Ukraine. So is he preparing to pounce on Taiwan? Well, <clears throat> that's hard to say. I, I would say that um, certainly he's watching what happens in Ukraine and certainly how the rest of the world uh, reacts to it. I think uh, Putin went to China in order to get Xi's blessing for the invasion. So I, I do think that they are related in that she will learn from how um, both Russia uh, carries out the invasion, but also how we react to it. Well, uh, how likely is the U.S. to respond if China makes a move on Taiwan? Well, I think we have to characterize what the response will be. Um, we can't really enter a conflict with China without creating the risk of nuclear war. So I think our re response will be similar to what we did during the Berlin airlift, for example. So it will be you know, responding with aid and comfort to the people of Taiwan. I think we may be focused on perhaps destroying the uh, Taiwanese semiconductor infrastructure to prevent it from falling in China's hands, and perhaps some of the weapon systems that we have sold to the Taiwanese. That's a big issue there, uh, the semiconductor industry. Uh, how important is that to the United States in our life here? Well, it's incredibly important. The tai uh, Taiwan Semiconductor is the best chip manufacturer in the world today. It's no longer American companies. It is TSMC. Now, the good news is they've started to build a fab in Arizona. Uh, so, you know, part of what we would be doing in the response to a, a potential invasion by China would be relocating the engineers and scientists that work on chips and as many of the people of Taiwan that would like to, you know, leave uh, before the invasion begins. And General Spaulding, a recent report in the New York Times suggests the Biden administration shared intelligence on the Russian troop buildup with the Chinese and the communist government then shared that information with Moscow. Your thoughts on that? Did you see that one? Well, if that is the case, um, you know, I, I really attribute it to really misunderstanding the relationship between Russia and China, misunderstanding the fact that we have entered the second Cold War, and misunderstanding the fact that we need to be much more strategic in how we respond to their continued working together to carry out their, um, their own uh, um, actions for their own interests. Well, we've seen a strengthening of that relationship between Russia and China in recent months, and they're even bringing in other countries to form what some say is a new anti-U.S. alliance, a new axis of power. So how great is that threat to the United States, and what should we do about it? It's greater than it was during the Cold War, because if you remember, uh, the economy of the Soviet Union uh, was not near what the free world was. Today, the supply chain goes through China. Uh, Russia has enormous energy reserves. When they add or annex you know, Ukraine, that adds technology, uh, that technology that Russia doesn't currently have. U Ukraine plus Russia plus China plus China's Belt and Road Initiative, so all the satellite states to include countries like Iran and North Korea and others that are along the Belt and Road Initiative, makes them incredibly powerful, not just militarily, not just from a nuclear weapon perspective, but also economically, financially, and increasingly technologically. They have hypersonic weapons that exceed what we have here in the West. They have uh, quantum communications capabilities. They have artificial intelligence that exceeds our capabilities. It's a really a fundamentally different world, and, and the tragedy of it all is that we help them build it. And we're not doing a lot to advance our own, are we? No, and that's, uh, that's another problem. We invested in ourselves infrastructure, manufacturing, science and technology, STEM education during the Cold War, that, which lasted over 40 years. In the 30 years uh, plus since the Cold War ended, We've invested all of our innovation, technology, talent, and capital into China and her satellites. Wow. 
And the Biden administration, uh, the critics of the Biden administration say all of this is happening because of weakness demonstrated by the U.S. and the Afghanistan withdrawal. So is that the reason for this response or is more at play here? No, it's been building for a long time, and it's not just the Biden administration. We have we we started a change during the Trump administration. It wasn't completely carried through. I think um, you go back all the way to um, George H. W. Bush and his inability to respond to China's uh, Tiananmen Square massacre, and the fact that we went through several several presidents after that that continued to aid and abet China. This has been growing. Uh, we knew it was happening. We just we wanted to hope or wish it away, kind of like Chamberlain and uh, and others of his ilk uh, during World War II. Okay, peace through strength. Remember that one? Okay, General Robert Spaulding, senior fellow at the Hudson Institute, as always. We appreciate you, General, for sharing your time and insights. Thank you.